Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Okay, it's 7 p.m. and I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. Um, Jennifer, if you could put your um, name and um, the fact that you're Vermont Academy in the chat, that helps us keep track. Just in case we have a flood of people coming at the last minute, then we know who you are. And the first uh, item on the agenda is public comment. Is there any public comment or do we move right into the meat of the meeting? Move Very on. Good. Go ahead. I said move on. Move on. Um, so Jennifer is here to uh, tell us about the Dr. Dr. Zakara, I should say, excuse me, so informal in a small town, is here to tell us about the uh, preparations for COVID. And Jennifer, um, if you could be brief and then let us ask questions, I think that would be most effective. I'll just start by saying, I thought you folks were awesome last year. So um, th that is that is how I, uh, that's why I say that. But go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. And if you hear any background noise, it's my two dogs competing for attention. I should have done this from work, but I didn't. And um, I'm sorry about that. I'll try to keep it controlled. Um, so just as, as you were saying, you need a quick summary. Um, we have 97% of our community vaccinated um, by another week or two. It'll be even higher. Um, we also are going to participate in the state's uh, weekly PCR testing. Uh, so that will uh, happen, I believe, on Thursdays, and then the, the, um, it's a sort of a nose swab test that is self-administered and sent out. Um, so we, in addition to having a vaccinated community, will also do that. Um, we're quite aware of the fact that some of COVID is being trans uh, transferred through younger children or, say, babies in daycare and so on, so we have precautions with our young families and the way in which they having kids not attending Vermont Academy coming into buildings, which we're allowing, but they have to be accompanied by the employee and sit in a certain area of the dining hall um, and so on. Um, it didn't make sense to completely separate them because the, the, they were um, with their families anyway. So we're going to just keep a close watch on that and hope that the PCR testing will, will help us to control that. Um, as, as in last year, we have quarantine space that we reserve should we need to contact trace and move students out of the community or faculty. Um, and uh, we are in communication weekly with the Lakes Region Athletic Group because we are going to have sports. We, in fact, we already started, but we, the league made a rule that no unvaccinated players can compete. They can practice with their teams. They can do scrimmages on their home campuses, but they cannot travel uh, and compete if they are not vaccinated. So that did have some <laughs> feedback from various families and a few of us lost some students as a result, but we felt that it was the right decision. We still do. Um, although it was a decision that was agreed upon, it was a unilateral decision that came from the Lakes Region officially each school asserted its own uh, position, though they all are shared in common. Um, let me think here. We are going to have family weekend, which will be the second weekend in October, and families will come to school if they are vaccinated or if they have a, a medical um, reason why they couldn't be vaccinated, they have to bring a PCR test. Um, we will be keeping everybody outside uh, except for a panel in the Nita Shukas Theater where everyone will be separated and masked. And by the way, whenever we're in the theater in a large group, we're all wearing masks anyway. Uh, but most of the activities for parents will be outside. And then we probably will have video conferencing um, and so on there. Parents are allowed to come to games on the weekends, but they need to be vaccinated. 
and they'll be outside. We, as a school, I forgot to tell you, we don't have to wear masks outside, but we do inside. And as per Vermont law, that lasts through the first week of October and we just abide by whatever the state says there. But um, it may be that we can not have, have to have masks inside after that point. We don't know for sure. Um, we did postpone finally reunion until next year. We had an elderly population coming back and we, you know, we don't want anybody to get sick when they come for their reunion. So that'll be next year as a double year reunion in the fall. So hopefully that gives you an overview. And then um, Amy, I'll just take any questions that anybody has. Okay. Uh, anybody have questions um, for Dr. Zakara about VA precautions? Susan, was that a hand? No. Um, I have a question. Are you, I, I'm, I've heard that you're getting um, students from out of the country, which I think is great. I'm, I'm sure that's important to your continued fiscal health. Um, is enrollment normal? Uh, I mean, what's no. normal? Uh, well, I have to say that New Hampshire has benefited from the live free or die mentality with, with uh, their enrollment more than we have. We have a good enrollment. We're going to, we're, we're, our target is 200 and we'll be there shortly. But um, in New Hampshire, they have over enrollment because they have, I mean, even with the number of COVID cases that schools have lived with, a lot of parents really want that, um, that freedom. So um, they have uh, benefited more than um, we have per se, you know, we, we really followed everything pretty strictly and that can turn some people away, um, but we're really happy with the enrollment we have and um, everything's going really well on campus too, so. So 200 um, is a little low for you, is that what I'm hearing? No, it's actually our average, <laughs> it's what we publish is our average, but we want to grow the school with our strategic plan to about 230 by 2026, which is our 150th. So we feel that's the right number for the school. And um, of course we have aspirations each year to increase beyond 200. Um, but right now with COVID, I think that's where we are. I thought you were gonna ask if the um, international students are vaccinated. We did require them to be vaccinated. Um, if they could not get a vaccine, we brought them to get one here. And actually, we just had an all-school possibility for a vaccine last Thursday that the state provided us with some um, health care staff. So it's a very different year with state support. We feel like the communication is clearer and um, everybody just knows what to do more. And um, we're really grateful for it. Last chance for questions? Okay, thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate your coming on and making yourself available you. to us. You're getting the thumbs up from Rick. Okay, <laughs> great. And, and by the way, the market, um, the students, only seniors are allowed to the market during the school day. After the school day, underclassmen are allowed. Everyone must wear a mask. I guess I should ask, because I know all my neighbors are going to want to know, are people allowed on campus? So, you know, the signs were so clear last year. We could we could wander up Shepherd Lane, but that was it. So is yeah. that the same status this year? No trespassing anywhere? Well, it's not trespassing. We, we you know, we, we're working on a, a community pathway, actually, I believe, um, with the village uh, that would go from the recreation area or, you know, the park across the way up into the, the, the paths through the, the school. So basically, you know, we would just ask that, that anybody stay away from a student, <clears throat> area, you know, so main, so long walk, south walk, but you certainly can walk up past Levitt House up to, you know, Shep Lane and so on and um, use the trails as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to really keep the, the main part of campus where students are and classes are uh, separate. So, so otherwise we welcome people to come. That's great. Okay. Um, any, any questions from our new people who've just joined? All right, Jennifer, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just uh, for the purposes of Carl, who is um, always trying to keep track of things for our open meeting law compliance, 
Um, please put your name and if you represent a group, put that group into the chat so that we have access to it once the um, meeting ends. We are ready for the municipal planning grant. And I, I don't know about you folks, but I am so grateful for the work that Gary Fox has put in on this grant. So here's my counsel for you. Um, I don't know whether you have had a chance to read over um, the grant that I sent you, which was lacking the all important work plan. Don't worry about the details. Gary and I will make sure that the action steps, the goals, the things that we get points for from commerce and community development, those will all be clear in the grant. Um, worry, in, worry. Instead, please devote your attention to the ideas expressed in the grant. So again, I apologize for the late breaking news, but um, are there questions? What, what would people like at this point? Sounds like we're good to go. Uh, Carl, have, you have a hand. Yeah. So um, I noticed that the, uh, the proposal uh, kind of emphasizes uh, growth and economics. Is that really essential? In other words, does our highest and best use have to have an economic component? Um, the my understanding of this and Gary hoped to be here, but I don't see him so I can follow up with him afterwards on your question. My understanding is that infill development and actually Rick, you may be able to help us out with this too. infill development, which is when you create a gap and then you try and come up with something to fill the gap is smart growth and leads to economic development. This does not mean that we are putting a store there, but these are the principles, as I understand them, of smart growth and economic development. Rick, do you want to comment? Because I, I, I'm such a novice at this. Which Rick? Rick Cowan, would you like okay. to comment? <laughs> um, Rick one or Rick two. Um, I think that you stated it quite aptly and accurately. The, um, the, the avoiding sprawl by growing in instead of out is, is, I think, gets us a lot of points. And also using spaces that were uh, central spaces that were previously worked for, for one use um, and repurposing those spaces is um, another high uh, sort of enhanced value for the people, I think, who do these grants. Now, Gary, of course, could speak to this much more um, um, accurately. So um, we, oh, and there he is, as, as if we had called him up. So let me just say but while we're going, um, so what Rick is talking about, averting sprawl, is the idea that the village stays compact and that we work on building up the village. And there's a real demarcation as you leave the village and get into the area where more people uh, live. So Gary, the, the town, the question that um, Carl just asked and for which Rick and I, Rick Cowan and I tried to answer is the grant speaks about economic development and smart growth. Um, why do we have those terms in there? And is that appropriate for this grant? Yes, yeah, so um, designated village center, um, <clears throat> those are, um, those are some of the things that you, um, <clears throat> that you need to have, the his historic village. Um, so you're maintaining some type of uh, design review. You have uh, walkability, complete streets. It's a designated village center. So it has safe walking. Um, it's just, it's part of the criteria. And um, one of the uh, competitive uh, criteria is to um, is to meet state objectives. So if the application is looking at state objectives, um, you're way more likely uh, to get a grant accepted. And this year, one of the two objectives is uh, master planning for a designated downtown or a designated village center. So uh, since the project that the trustees chose is revitalization of the west end of the designated village center. Um, 
really all of the characteristics that people talked about when they said revital when you folks when we said revitalization were all of the things that are in a master plan so um uh, and some of that is walkability sidewalks and the um so things like complete streets and uh, what was the other one that you used there? Oh, smart growth. Those, those are all principles for uh, village so centers that are the two. Consistent. The two that the the two specific questions were smart growth and economic development. Does that commit us to anything specific at that site? Um, at that particular site, no. Um, I think we just need to make sure we can make an argument for um, economic development in there and. That's not difficult to do. I would argue that if we're putting something better than a derelict building that can't be inhabited, then we are contributing to economic development. Yes. Pretty much infill redevelopment contributes. Mm -hmm. It adds to your tax base. It um, adds to um, uh, foot traffic, uh, vehicle traffic. Okay. So follow-up question. If we were to... Um, and put um, some sort of um, an adjunct to the park in that space, for example, a recreational facility of some sort, would that meet criteria for economic? Um, recreation does, if, especially if it's um, uh, destination recreation. Um, however, I think if you're uh, the, the the application, the, um, uh, the, the master plan is for um, the west end of the village. So some of the things that, uh, that you all mentioned in the conversation that we have in there was um, to look at the interface of um, uh, parking with the street, with the, um, with the post office, and that Main Street Arts needs more, uh, more parking. So, so that alone, that alone gives you, without even talking about what's going to go in the infill site, that alone gives you the um, economic development aspect, just making it more feasible for uh, more people to attend events at Main Street Arts. Louise, you had your hand up? Yes, I just want to say that the park development was an economic development in the bigger sense that it made the community more um, desirable for the people to live in, to have businesses. So the economic development is a broad term. Yeah. And I think that would apply here too. Okay, Susan? I'd like to mention the term social capital. And uh, the park has certainly contributed to social capital in it being a place for people to uh, gather. Um, we, we have lost, when people talk about the past of the village, we've really lost the communities of the churches who were so vibrant and and the clubs that uh, years ago were so important. And uh, so we, we have a real lack of gathering uh, community spaces now. So, so I think that uh, any combination of uh, those kinds of values uh, with with the park, something to complement the park, uh, would would also add to social capital. So another question that I've heard, Gary, is: Are we? Do we have to specify uh, what we want to be in there? Does it have to be something that we discussed in our previous meetings? Can we be open ended about what will happen in that space for infill redevelopment? Yeah, so the, the, the purpose of the, um, of the study, of the, the public meeting, talking about your visioning, of the um, uh, gathering all the data about uh, what is in there, um, and then presenting a charrette to talk about your ideas and what you're in there, is that um, uh, we don't have any preconceived notions. We're asking for a process where the, we're not taking... Um, a couple of people's or, or one committee's view of what um, what should be there, whether it's the, the streetscapes, the parking, the infill redevelopment. Um, we're looking at it with a blank page and we're taking the um, 
the input from the community meeting and then um, design aspects from the charrette. Um, so yeah, the, the um, there's no um, no constraints from what's gone, gone before. So there'll be a, a, a public meeting where the vision is gathered by the consultants and they'll come back and they'll talk about the constraints and okay, people were talking about X, Y, and Z and um, uh, here's why uh, X and Y will work. Here's some constraints of why Z is not possible in this site. So they'll present all those and then you'll do a charrette, but there's, there's no um, sticking to just, we're not saying in this application, um, we want we a fire want, station and we want it now. Right. We're not saying we want either a fire station or a apartment complex mm -hmm. and, and give us those alternatives. You know, um, you, you could say something like that. I don't think it would. Yeah, you could say something like that. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sh certainly after the discussion we've been having, it seems to me and making sure that fire station comes up and gets chewed over thoroughly would be helpful, but that's that's my my talking and so, maybe not anyone else. So so the integrity of the, of the project, saying that we're having an open community process, you you really want to say that in the public meeting. So you want to make sure that you're there and you bring that up. Okay, uh, next and call. Gets, and then that's how you ensure that something is in there. Every one of you can make sure that something gets in there simply by showing up and, and getting it in there in the public yep. meeting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, Carl, and then Rick Cowan. Um, I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit about um, charrette and the mechanics of how it would work. So, so the consultants are really the, the experts on that. I, I am not. Um, I have participated in a lot of charrettes and um, I've seen a few different um, mechanism used depending on, you know, if there were three specific options or if it was um, an open book. But um, basically, uh, the consultants will take, um, um, well, let's, why don't we walk, <laughs> do you want to just like walk through the work plan and, and, and say what each piece does because the charrette builds on the earlier pieces. You, you kinda... I want to, I want to jump in first and say, basically, Carl, a charrette is a meeting. It's a group of people coming together, being presented with information and meeting on that topic. I, I, I keep thinking that it's an easel or a piece of furniture, but it is a community meeting. I understand that. I'm just a little bit more curious about the mechanics of how such a meeting would take place and how okay, do, so that. let me give Rick a chance to ask his question and then we'll go to Gary walking us through the work plan. Rick? Thank you. Um, Gary, Would were we to get this grant, would it strengthen, and we went through the process, would it strengthen an application we might for might make for future funding of a whatever the village decides should go there? Yeah, certainly. That's one of the, um, one of the uh, purposes and outcomes of of a planning process is that it, it gives you a document that supports your funding applications for implementation. Thanks. Okay, so if there are no other questions right at the moment, we'll have Gary walk us through, particularly the charrette, but I think the work plan. Would you like me to share that, Gary? Sure. No, that's not it. Sorry. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Well, I'll just start talking about it briefly while Amy's doing that. So, so the um, uh, with the with the grant funds, it, we do need to follow a competitive procurement process. So, <laughs> so the first thing that we're doing is that um, the project team. Um, will create an, um, a request for qualifications where we're describing um, what we want the consultants to do, what we want their qualifications to be, what are their, you know, we want them to be able to do this type of um, uh, uh, mapping and data gathering and um, 
and run uh, public meetings in charrettes and be able to create designs from input they get. So we'll, we'll create a, um, a process to choose uh, consultants. That'll be the first step. And then um, a, a kickoff meeting where <clears throat> the consultants will meet with a project team and um, ensure uh, understanding of the project, review um, all of the old plans like the um, you know, the, what the Wyndham Regional Commission has in Saxons River, the, the documents behind the designated village center. Um, and then uh, because um, some of it is going to be infill redevelopment of 37 Main Street, we need a, a survey, a formal um, survey of that property. And um, Amy is gonna look and see if one exists, uh, but, um, I, I haven't seen any, so that's in there as a second step is getting the survey. Um, and then uh, a data gathering. So that's uh, creating a, um, a base map. So, so everything that's the study area, um, we wanna know everything about it. Um, the, the past uses, the contamination, uh, what's the zoning like there? What's uh, uh, the, the density? What are the buildings that are there? Um, and so the, the roads, streetscapes, everything will be um, uh, uh, drawn and uh, available for presenting. And then the first public meeting will be, um, the consultants will be showing the public um, existing conditions. So here's the current road, sidewalks, buildings, um, what you're constrained by zoning. They'll, they'll explain everything about their process. They'll facilitate a community visioning process, much like you did with the trustees meeting saying, so, you know, what, what is the community's vision for, um, you know, for this end of the, uh, the West end of the designated village center. And um, they'll, uh, you know, have a, a lot of um, uh, uh, questions designed towards eliciting information that's needed to create plans. And so then they'll take that input and <clears throat> they'll do, um, the high level assessment. So they'll look at um, the whole area, uh, the, the goals that we presented, the visions that they're in there and create some drawings of the target area, some models to work with. <clears throat> um, and uh, those will be the, the tools to be used in the mechanism that's the charrette that, that Carl was asking about. So um, depending on the consultants that are chosen and, and part of the RFQ process is you know, have you, the, the, the interview process, have you conducted um, design charrettes? What, is, what does that look like? What, um, what was the project and what, what, were the, what was your process and what did the outcomes look like? Um, but so then um, the consultants will do that uh, second public meeting where they have uh, models, designs on the wall. I've participated on some where you, uh, you move blocks around on a, um, you know, an aerial image of the, of the area. I've been to some where there's the um, survey type drawings and you have the criteria that came up in earlier public meetings um, where it was, this is what we want for outside space. This is what we want for inside space and break up into small groups with tracing paper and people would draw things that was in, in their imagination on it. And so then the consultants will leave that meeting and they'll take, um, uh, or a, another part of that meeting actually was taking all of the group's drawings and everyone in the meeting coming together and each group would present their stuff and people would vote on the aspects of each drawing that they liked the most. And then the consultants will um, uh, take those and combine the input um, with existing conditions and constraints and they'll come up with a, a few final uh, products that they uh, bring back to um, you know, final meeting. So these are, if we're saying we want to, you know, we want uh, three options as our deliverable, they'll bring those back based on the, the charrettes and the voting. Um, and then, uh, so uh, developing some initial strategies for implementation. So they'll take those, um, the end product and um, <clears throat> say, okay, so this is what you would need to do for an, for an implementation. And it might be, um, uh, it might be that you start with a, an archaeological study and then um, uh, do some <coughs> uh, uh, well testing, say if it wasn't an area with a water system. But um, 
<clears throat> so then their um, recommendations for implementation will will be okay. Here's the steps that you need to take to implement, you know, uh, option one. Um, in in this sequence, here are some uh, funding opportunities that fit that project, um, and and here's some rough designs of what you're looking at. And you know, it might be ten or twenty percent designs. It wouldn't be anything that you could uh, construct off of, but it would give you that roadmap that you could take to um, uh, to a funder, um, whether it's to present to the public for a capital campaign, um, whether it's to uh, you know go to uh, grant opportunities, um, you have that that document to bring there, and so then uh, they'll they'll create those, um, review those with the project team for some uh, final editing, make sure there's things are on target and it's what uh, everyone felt that th that they concur. That's what the the community was looking at. Um, and so then they'll, uh, and then the consultants will create those uh, final reports to present at a public meeting and answer questions on. And, um, and that's basically what that process looks like. And um, yeah, so, that, so that's it in, in draft form. It, it, it can and may change a little bit based on input here and also based on reviewing it with, um, uh, with Chuck, with our planning administrator. Um, and with uh, the state, both of whom have expertise with these uh, pieces. And that's it for me in the descriptions there. I'm gonna stop um, screen sharing unless uh, people have details they want to see. Carl? Um, yeah, so the, um, uh, the consultants will, um, look at this input and recommend your three final options, which then go to the, the team. And then does, does the final report address one option, three options, the best option? And where does the final, where do we go from that final report? Gary? Uh, wherever you want. I mean, then it's, you know, you, you have those, um, uh, you have the work product and you choose what you want to do with it. Like that's up to the community saying, well, um, <clears throat> this, this is what we want to want to go with. I mean, and it can be that um, part of the final report, each option has uh, pros and cons, like what, why you might want to do it, why you might not want to do it, or what are the uh, costs and benefits. Um, you know, different consultants will have different ways of evaluating them, but um, another way of looking at it is we can ask them to have a, a first, second, and third choice um, in their view based on criteria. Um, and, then, uh, and then you would have a preconceived, okay, this was determined based on costs and benefits. This was determined to be the best choice, second choice, third choice, and you could either go with that order, you could um, try going with the first choice. And if you run into things that it won't work because you can't find the first choice is some type of commercial enterprise on a first floor with housing on a second and third floor. And you can't find any uh, end users for the commercial enterprise, then it's not gonna work. You might need to go to a, a second choice. Um, so so the, there are a lot of ways to work through those um, you know, the next options that you get. But I, I do think you want to be, I do think you want to have some options presented out of this um, uh, endpoint and not just have one choice saying, okay, it's going to be a fire station and here it is and here you got it. Because then you go to build it and you end up with the community not agreeing on it and, and nothing ever happens because you had one choice only and it turned out to be something that people couldn't, get on the same page with, and you have no second thing to, to fall back on. And so what would you estimate a time frame uh, for getting to that final report and getting to the community to look at Yeah, that? good good question. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say like uh, six to nine months, but, but again, this is a draft. And as we agree on a draft and, um, and work through it, we'll be able to put a timeline on it. 
Uh, but cer- you know, certain things do c- certainly have a, a time frame, like an RFQ process. You need to um, uh, you need time to um, distribute it and allow um, proposals to come in and questions to be asked and respond to questions. And then you need uh, uh, time for after the questions for final product. And then you need to have a review committee look at them and choose consultants you want to interview. So um, e- each set of steps will have a, a time period in them that are it's mostly sequential. Um, and so once we have a final work plan, we'll be able to go through that sequence and, and put a, a timeline on it based on so, when uh, grants are, you know, funds are available from grant awards. So Rick, I see your hand, but let me interrupt just for a moment. Um, Gary and I uh, went in to talk to Scott Pickup to make sure that um, this met with his approval that we could use Gary's time, probably Chuck Wise's time as we move forward. And he said, yes, he envisions that we would find out about the grant towards the end of 2021, perhaps in December, and then we could begin working on it January, February, March. So I I think these things tend to have a life of their own. but I, I certainly don't want to have anything happen in December. I think that's a terrible month for community meetings. Um, so I would look forward to the planning happening January, February, March, and then the, the rollout of the actual um, stuff once the research is done after that. Um, Rick, I'm going to let you speak now. You are muted. Okay. Um, Gary, what would the role of the building's owner, um, Main Street Arts, be in the process? Um, good question. So um, I would say it would be important for the, um, uh, for the owner to have a representative on the project team. Um, I have talked to Susan Still, who is here tonight, um, about about the grant. Um, Also, the fact that she's done a lot of community planning was uh, very uh, advantageous, it seems to me, going forward in this. Susan, does that sound reasonable to you, that you would have somebody involved in the project planning? Yes, Okay, Rick, more questions? Gordon, I see your hand. Let me just make sure I've, uh, Ellen, you had a question. Oh, no, I was scratching my head, sorry. Okay, (laughs) Gordon. I'm sorry, you're muted, Gordon. Um, And- Okay, I'm unmuted, right? Right. Well, given that last question, then the thing is, Uh, what is, you know, what will be the connection between Main Street Arts and whatever comes up? And will it benefit Main Street Arts? So Gordon, Mm -hmm. I can give you a little bit of background and then turn it back to Susan. Um, Main Street Arts has been very eager to participate in this process. Um, So they have provided the trustees with um, a number of extremely detailed studies about the condition of the building. They have let it be known that they do not want to use that building. And in fact, at this moment, they're clearing it out so that it will be an empty building. So this this is not the trustees seeing an opportunity and moving in on Main Street Arts. This is Main Street Arts declaring that it it is very interested in the community of Saxons River and moving the whole community forward. Now I've stolen all Susan's thunder. Susan, do you wanna comment on everything I've said? Revitalizing Saxons River revitalizes Main Street Arts. And uh, that, I think that says it all. Main Street Arts is very interested as Amy said, in developing the community of Saxons River and and Greater Rockingham, so um, whatever goes there that is makes a stronger community, makes a stronger Main Street Arts. Gordon, is there a follow up? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I, I'm just I'm just thinking. 
No, I, I, I don't know. Other than you know, um, that means you know that 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 it means there's something happening there. Is, I, if there's no direct connection between the whatever happened, what, if a building were to come up, what would it be its relationship to Main Street Arts? If so it, that is that that's is just what, a, that's just a general question. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that's what the process is about. Right. Yeah. So one so of the I one see, of. Hold on, I see Carl's hand and I saw Louise's hand, but let let's just make sure that we've finished with Gordon's question first. This is related to Gordon's question. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm I'm finished. Okay, uh, Louise, and then Carl. When we did the park, uh, we couldn't get. And apply for the grant and get the grant until we own the property. And that might be uh, something that down the pike where you can't really apply for money for a privately owned piece of property. Uh, if you were going to do something there, you'd have to, they would have to turn it over to the village for a dollar or whatever. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as you get. To Can I answer that? Yeah. <laughs> So, so one of the questions in the in the work plan is um, for the consultants to evaluate in each, op in each option um, uh, who should be the owner. So they're evaluating it, and it and for some end uses, it, it might be a private owner. Uh, for some, it might be the village. Um, but that is one of the. That's a very good point, Louise, and that is one of the um, and and Gordon, and that is one of the. Outcomes listed for each option is recommendations on ownership and, and why. Um, I'd like to go to Carl now, unless I'm misreading you, Carl. Did you have a question? Um, I think it's kind of been indirectly answered by uh, Louise and Gary, so I'm okay. Okay. Um, Rick, I can't tell. Are you asking a question or... <laughs> I just I want to note that the building is appraised by the town of Rockingham to be worth about 65 ish is it Susan $66,000 and the land itself is uh, said to be about $40,000 those are the figures that the town of Rockingham has oh, for 60, that. 62 I believe Rick thank you so a total value of $102,000 then for land and building no, 62 total and 40 for land and 22, I guess, for... Okay. <laughs> it's cheap. The building needs to be taken down, which is an expense, so it's hard to figure all those values. Yeah. Okay. Matt, uh, had his hand up. Yeah. Matt, go um, ahead. Yeah, just to, to go uh, um, yeah, try to put this together. Um so it, it would be great to have it redeveloped. Um, those numbers you just came up with, I'm, I'm not sure what those are, are for. Is that for sale price? or? Um, We're not talking sale yet. We're just talking town okay. of Rockingham value. Right. Well, I'm hearing numbers for a building that is supposedly not usable and um, property. Um, and then are, are we going to be, although it has to be considered heavily, um, what goes in there as far as how it interacts with the village, number one, but certainly uh, Main Street Arts, too. Um, are we going to be um, governed by Main Street Arts with what goes in there? Or? Nope. Okay. This is a new process. Okay. So um, I, I was reminded as I worked through the details that, you know, we, we are part of a historic district. So it's, it's kind of a classy end of town. We've got the historical society, we have the park, we have the post office, and we have Main Street Arts. And in the middle of it, we have this building that is uninhabitable. So I think, and, and we have some issues with parking and with the crosswalk. So I think we have a strong proposal. <laughs> but you Not know, the crosswalk again. <laughs> well, it's, it's part of the master plan, so it gets looked at. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's tiny, but, and uh, not the parking again. I mean, Rick wanted to talk about those people that pull across and park the wrong way. Um, Rick, I do. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carl, is that a hand raised? Yeah, so uh, it seems to me, though, that um, Main Street Arts has 
kind of a veto power if they are unhappy with the proposal, they don't have to sell the property. Sure. And that's true of any sale. Yeah, right. And we certainly have one local property owner who's eager to snap things up whenever they become available. So Rick Holloway. So in regards to that and the, and the problem, I mean, I think that, and Gary can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would assume that this whole process is coming up for ideas of, of how to re redevelop or revitalize that property in this end of town and coming out of that charrette and those ideas, it could be anything from main street arts, you know, an idea coming up that, that allows main street arts to do something with it. It could be, another private developer who's going to purchase it, you know, like Gary mentioned, uh, uh, you know, like affordable housing or housing with retail or, or something beneath. I mean, it, it, I don't, I think that this is open to my, my interpretation is this is open to almost anything in that realm. And that this project is coming up with what those ideas are and then who actually owns it after, you know, who, who owns that idea. So whether, you know, at the end of the day, it's a parking garage for Main Street Arts, you know, or it's, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, an, an apartment building with retail underneath, or it's, a skating you know, rink. <laughs> so a skating, you know, who, but whoever, whoever has the, the, um, funding or or whatever to actually turn that into reality you know whether it be funding through grants working with gary or or what but i think that the actual ownership of the final project comes out of the what is the best idea and plan for it and, you know it could be the best idea is x and the main street arts in the village or some group get together and then go out and try to find a, a developer to actually bring that project to reality so there's I, I don't i don't see it as i see the ownership or that kind of like veto status you know as long as main street arts owns the property yeah they have veto status it's like no we're not going to sell it to you or we're not going to give it to you or we're going to just you know leave a light on and let a mouse chew through the wire and that'll take care of it um, <laughs> <laughs> so that that's it for me all right um, and I guess I should offer the, uh, the alternative. We did vote to pursue this at the last meeting, but uh, is this discussion giving people cold feet? Do you, do you want the idea? Of, do you want to back out? Matt? Um, well, not necessarily. Um, I think it's a, it's a great thing, but would it, um, what about transferring ownership? To the village. I mean, I'm hearing that the building is non uh, is not usable, and um, you know, as Louise had said, um, getting funding for things through the village um, seemed to work well for the um, for the um, park, um, and then it kind of kind of puts it into the the village. Um, more than being owned by a private uh, uh, nonprofit that the village is getting involved with to decide, help decide what's the, the best use for it. Hold on, Gordon. So am I reading you correctly, Matt? You would like to discuss whether the village should buy this property outright from Main Street Arts? You would, you would rather do that than go through this grant process, which looks at ownership among another other issues? Mm. I wouldn't say that because it seemed like the, the asking price was a hundred thousand this evening. Well, um, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> so I don't, I don't see that happening. If they want to turn it over to the village for a dollar and then be involved in the process of um, the redevelopment, then um, maybe it makes it simpler. But well, I think uh, so far we've got a process that we're mm -hmm. discussing right. and I'm not eager to short circuit that unless yeah, yeah. people want to back out completely. Um, yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Just, Gordon, did just, I see your hand? Just kind of... I, I just have one ask a stupid question, which is what else does the, uh, the village own on Main Street? 
Oh gosh, I'm going to defer to Louise. I know we have, uh, we own the park. We have some forest. Louise, are you willing to uh, unmute yourself and tell us? Uh, the park, the fire station, the uh, former trolley, and the what? former trolley station. It's at the, the fire station. Oh, okay. Where Rick is right now. Um, and the part of the here Har Haran Park is outside the villas, actually, mostly. That's uh, behind. Um, you go over the bridge towards Bellows Falls, and it's right on your right, and goes. It's practically straight up. But that's all I can think of that we own. The wreck is the wreck. Not in the village. Yep. Yeah, we own it, but it's not in the village. So uh, I thought the question is, what what do we own? But we own the I, I, th I thought it was Main Street. What do we own on Main Street? Yeah. What? Is, what do you? Is that your question, Gordon? Yes. We so on Main own. Street, it's the park and the fire station and the fire station. And what about the historical society? No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a separate can, entity. Yes. Okay. You Good can't have it. You can't have it. Okay. More questions. <laughs> Uh, so what is your, uh, what is your wish? This, this grant needs more tweaking, but I feel fairly confident, Gary can contradict me if he would like to, that we're almost there. So, uh, and I can bring it back to you next week, but I think the kinds of changes are not uh, what I would call substantive. They are things like um, making it read more smoothly and making the, um, so for example, there are references to goals and action steps that could be done more effectively with actually quoting the town plan or attaching a smaller document taken from the town plan. So those are the kinds of questions that I think will be answered by the next iteration. Louise. Uh, I think I would like to see you add more stakeholders. Uh, 24 Main is an entity. Um, Village Early Learning Center, you have it uh, misnamed. And the Montessori School, and what about the Sackens River Elementary School? They're all stakeholders. Good point. Uh, and who, then what is 24 Main? That is me? what used to be Christ Church. It's a, and now they're incorporated. She might be at the house. They own so the building. Are you asking for stakeholders to write a letter of support or to be reflected in the process? To be named uh, in your list of stakeholders. Named stakeholders. Okay. You know, these are people who are be affected by all this. So. Yep. Anyone else have want to weigh in on that question? I think I named uh, Vermont Academy and the Historical Society, and um, I'm missing a really obvious one. The market. Main Street yeah. Arts. Main Street Arts, yeah. Do yeah. we want the market named as a stakeholder? I would think. And sure. The, and Why the not? inn? And the inn? The only business in town. The inn. What about the junker guy? It's our. <laughs> Yeah, we should include him too. <laughs> that might be a good use for that property. <laughs> <Junkies. laughs> I'm going to dismiss that as uh, un unless I hear a strong <laughs> contradiction. Unless the junker guy is willing to change use based on the results of the study. <laughs> His property. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying West End, West End, West End. <laughs> All right, any more suggestions for improving the grant? You know, I'm working up to uh, entertaining a motion to approve it in concept uh, and to allow more tweaks. So more suggestions on the meat of the grant? Yeah. Carl, <coughs> that was not a hand? No, I was okay. my head. <laughs> Do you want to see it once more? Gary, I, go ahead. Yeah, I just I would like to say that we discussed it in detail with John Bennett, who's a um, uh, associate director of the Wyndham Regional Commission and um, uh, works on these for all towns in, in the region, in Wyndham County. And uh, he indicated it was uh, the most competitive uh, planning grant he's, he's seen in a while. And 
certainly in, in what he's seen and heard uh, this year so far. So it, it definitely seems like a good project, what, what you guys are going for here, for, uh, in terms of being a fit for this grant and likely to get uh, funded. Great. So I'm going to ask again, do you want to see it once more? We have a meeting next Monday. I'm not uncomfortable taking it from here, but it's up to you. Carl? Yes, I would like to see it again. Okay. We have time. Do we not, Gary? And I've had no Yes. Time. Okay. So, so Gary and I will continue to work on it on the 20th. John Bennett recommended we talk to a woman in commerce and... Uh, community development, or maybe it's community and commerce development, ACCD, um, Jenny Lavoy, and we hope to meet with her in the interim. She apparently knows a lot about these grants and can advise us. But what I'm hearing is you would like to see it once more on the 20th, and at that point, we can thumbs up or thumbs down it. Gary, I cut you off. Did you have something else to add? No, just for, for a timeline, we do need to send it to the, the planning commission that week, the week of the 20th. It's so actually, the meeting is on the 30th. It's been changed. Yes. So we want, it, they, we want them to have it at least a week before their meeting. Oh, okay. Good point. And then same with the select board after the planning commission. We want them to have it a week before their meeting. Okay. So I'm planning to attend at least the um, planning commission meeting um, to answer any questions and uh, give them the grant. But that's where we are so far. All right. Any other comments before we move on? Thank you. And we're back on the agenda. So, committee reports and updates. Um, Rob Wheeler, you're up next. Yeah. Okay. So, would you like me to show the pictures of the sensors and while you talk about that? Yeah, you sure can. This must be great news, right? No. <laughs> uh, the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns are doing a study with different plants, um, facilities around the state. Uh, the water plant in Bells Falls is doing it. We're doing it. It's a study. Um, we have two vibrational sensors, one temperature sensor, and one uh, water sensor. So that's a vibrational sensor that you're seeing there. Um, and it's mounts on the wall, but it's actually, you can see it's strung actually onto the unit itself. So it picks up, supposedly picks up vibration, sends it out to my phone and an email if there's a excessive vibration or if we have excessive temperature or there's flooding in a certain building where the, where the sensor is. Um, it's a pilot program for a year. Um, and if you don't, Want to, if you want to participate in it, I think uh, I sent a letter to Amy. I believe it's $30 a month, I believe, or $30 a year to continue it after the year. We started it in July. Um, $30 a year. $30 a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so I'm, I'm happy to share this with everyone. This is a letter from Jim Carrion of the League of Cities and Towns. Uh, it's a pilot project that runs July to July 22. Uh, four sensors at no cost, vibration temperature to monitor, monitor conditions. The purpose of the pilot project is to see how the sensors work in municipal operations and how effective they are at preventing losses, which sounds great to me given what we've gone through. After the pilot has ended, you will be able to keep the sensors, and if you choose, you can continue the I'm on it dashboard subscription, which costs less than $30 a year. I've got a question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Um, Rob, don't we have a SCADA system that does all of that already? Yeah, no. We do have a SCADA system, but it doesn't tell you the vibration of the motors or the gearboxes. This is actually taking it down to the bearing or the gearbox 
So if you're what they're saying, if you have a vibration in the actual piece of equipment, like a bearing's yeah. going, it'll pick yeah. it up. Um, or if there's water on the floor in a certain room where the it's, we put it in where the well system is, um, mm -hmm. so you could get that. You you wouldn't necessarily see that on SCADA. Oh. Does, we don't have that monitoring type system, so this would pick it up quicker and send out a text or an email. Um, so. so this is all above and beyond what we have right now in place. Correct. Yep, correct. How many pilot? Nope. How many pilots are there? How many uh, towns are involved? Do you know? I I don't. I never did ask Jim what how many were involved. I, I don't. You told know. me no. eight, but maybe I made that up. Yeah, I don't. I know our water department is doing it, but I, that's as far as I know. We're not doing it in Bellows Falls, so I think we had enough, enough, and enough down here. So he moved moved it somewhere else. But I don't. I can ask him and get back to you. No, it's okay. Just curious. Um, yep. One more question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Matt. For, for Rob, do um, you think it's uh, worthy of something that we would want down there? Yeah, yeah, I know um, this is just a pilot pro program, but um, it's, I mean, it's too early to tell right now. I mean, uh, everything is new. So um, and, and, and those gearboxes, a lot, the ratio of they're so slow moving for vibration, the temperature, that might not be a bad thing, but it would only tell you, indicate that that room, it's in the main room where the blowers are. So if it got too hot, the fan's supposed to come on. So right. if it got too hot over temperature, then the fan would tell you that the fan may be gone. Um, yeah. And obviously, if a flood's happened in that room, you have a floor drain, but if it plugged up, I mean, obviously, it would go out the door. So, um, I, it, like I said, it's too early to tell. I, I've, only, I've got a couple of alarm alarms on it, but they were for the battery. One of the batteries and the vibrational ones needed to be changed. And other than that, it's been... It's been working fine for the last couple of months, so it's too early to too early for yep. me to tell. But, okay. All right. Question you know, from Rick Holloway. Sure. It, so it's just the one sensor. There's one nope. sensor. In there. it, there's four sensors. There's there's one on each gearbox in the head work. So there's one on the uh, grit screw. There's one on the fine screen. Those are vibrational sensors. There's a temperature sensor that's in the main building where the blowers are. And then huh. in where our main water comes in for our water pump and our new um, uh, water softener. It is a, there's a, and it's what it is. It's a hockey puck that they've hollowed out. And actually it's a water sensor that they, we put right on the floor. And that all goes back to the system on the computer. And it's done through um, just through the Wi-Fi. So, can it be? Signal, that way. Can it be linked to the SCADA system? You know, I know a lot of the, well, lot it's of, just through an just through an app on your phone. It's just through an app on your phone. Yeah, so just it's just linked to the to the Wi-Fi system. Hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure it could be linked to the SCADA system, but yeah, does it does it you know if it does any data logging or is it just a um? Like a trigger I don't alarm? know if it does any if it does any data logging. I know it checks itself every so often, so uh -huh. it does like check self checks. So there, there is that, and I know uh, Jim can look at look at look into more than I can. Okay. Um, so because he's like the overseer of the project. So. All right. Anything else? Uh, we're still on the wastewater treatment plant, but anything yep. else on the sensors? Okay, um, brief report on replacing the valve, that very expensive repair that um, we're paying for. Yeah, well, the, the auto switch is up and working. I don't right. know. Um, the, we had ordered, because we didn't know what was going to be needed, we ordered the electronic computer board or whatever, the circuit board and the motor. Um, they just replaced the circuit board. And the electric motor was not needed, so that's actually a spare. Do we did we ever get a bill for that? Yes. Um, so yep. in the um, in the current warrant, uh, I, I'm glad you asked me because I wanted to bring this by you. We have a bill from Hydra's Control Solutions 
for labor and parts to replace the actuator. That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. $7,004.18. So just, uh, Rick was very prescient, suggesting up to $8,000. Um, and we also have, for that same time, overtime for three um, employees, yeah. and that's 730 to 8-1. Well, uh, maybe it's eight eight. I'm assuming that's all the time. That uh, yeah, we we put together. It was just above and beyond, and just the overtime. I, we did the regular time through the contract, regular contract, but the overtime because we get on the other end. Um, we we build out that overtime for the three guys to watch it over the weekend. Yep, um, I remember that we had you coming down and making sure that the system didn't crash by doing it manually. Yeah, yeah. we had to we had to keep the bugs and the bacteria going, so the system had to be run on by hand. So we had so, to do that. Folks, you'll see that when we get to the warrant, it's about twelve thousand. It's about uh, one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So right. I'll I'll show that to you in a minute. All right. Uh, um, I did. I did order the um, door lock from J&H. Good. And that's going to be able to be coded with different codes. So the fire department will be able to have their own code. And we'll be able to have our own code. Um, and the other the other thing was... Um, Pipe insulation? Yeah. I, have, I had contacted the gentleman and gave him the PO for the date that he contacted me on for a PO. I think I copied you, Amy, on that. Yep. He's going to order the stuff and have – see when he can fit it in the schedule to do the insulating of the air pipes. Okay. So I don't, and, know, I don't know when that's going to happen. Okay. Carl, I think you had some questions about um, authorization to, to purchase spare parts. Am I right about that? Um, let's defer that. We're still collecting the data on that. So this has to do with the bond? This has to do with the grant, the USDA grant. Okay. And I know that I'm, um, I'm charged with uh, collecting some of those expenses so that Carl and Ben have what they need to, to wrap up that USDA um, procedure. Uh, is there anything else on the wastewater treatment plant? I want you all to know I had a special phone call with Ellen. She loves this discussion about the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> I learned a lot from Amy about it. <laughs> uh, the only other thing is, where are we at with the credit card? Do we ever make a oh. decision on that? Uh, no. Um, okay. Just what I'm just want to know. That's all. You don't care where we, which bank, right? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't care. Um, as long as it works. Yeah. Uh, so Sarah's only concern, as I recall, was she isn't here to speak to herself, to speak for herself. Sarah Campbell felt that if we had a credit card, it should be through um, the bank that we already do business with. She didn't want yes. to have a new one. Yes. Um, it, it it hasn't been warned, but what's your feeling? Do you want to vote on it, or should I put it? We're only we're going to meet in the next in the next week. Please, if you have any objections, get them to me. I will speak to Sarah, and uh, let's let's uh, discuss it and vote on it on the twentieth. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. And you want to refresh our memories, Rob? This is important to you because um, it's just different vendors. You can go online and buy purchase stuff that we don't have accounts at you know it's just there's only certain places that the village has accounts locally and sometimes we go somewhere else and get something a lot cheaper and it's you just don't you, you, and your hands are tied of oh wait a minute they don't have an account there so yeah. if you use a credit card then you sometimes can save money um sometimes when you write that. your vendor is out we love that? saving money yeah well, yeah. Sometimes when your regular vendor is out of supplies and you need to go find it elsewhere. And it, exactly. I mean, that's the other thing now is whoever's got it, whoever can get it to us. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be trying to work with, and I don't know if you guys have an issue with it, but our, one of our vendors is charging 88 bucks for shipping, no matter what you buy. 
from a small package to a big package. They don't want it, and they seem to be packaging it individually and charging the 88 bucks. So if we can, and it's a lab supply company. So if we can buy together between Bells Falls and Saxons River, I'm trying to do that. And then we can just split the shipping costs. Um, yep. But it's just, it's, I, I've got to call into them because I got another package today. And it was like, if yeah. they're thinking about charging me 88 bucks for this one, I'm going to lose my the mind town, on it. The town doesn't have like a, the town or the village doesn't have an account number with a courier that can be used instead. Mm, no, because it comes UPS, and that's just their stand. They've gone up to their standard shipping. It went from fifty-five to eighty-eight bucks. It just doesn't well, no, matter. Was, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering because if you if we had we, an account number oh. for UPS, then we can provide it to them, and then not have that kind of expense cost. No, mm -hmm. I can certainly ask that. Is this something that um, is good business practice, Ellen? It sounds like you have some special knowledge. <laughs> yeah, I deal with this a lot. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's a common practice if someone has an account number that they want to use instead. We do it on both ends of the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. So can we set, set it up like through J&H or set it up through UPS? And who does that? Uh, set it up through UPS or UPS. FedEx. Yeah. So would that be like Amy or Sarah? Or I would think it might be a town account. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. The there, I mean, there's some logistics issues in terms of passwords and usernames and so forth. But it's something. No. I mean, for the most part, we just need to get a number. Like if the town had a UPS account that we could give the number, and then it'd just be a little bit of bookkeeping for the town to bill, say, the village of Saxons River for their right items that were delivered on the account yeah it's right. i mean it's just a, a way to save some money there's you know but it it's that, a lot of money for any size package and no, domestic yeah. no it's yeah it's ridiculous because we got a package two packages the same day i mean but it's not my problem they picked a different the wrong size box it could have shipped everything together but it didn't <laughs> But so, I, I, I understand yeah, I mean, they're making money. It's ge ge generating revenue, but I'm about had it with them. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think you've got... That's more of like an international cost. It sounds like you've got two people to go to, Rob. Um, and okay. if you need help... I mean, you, you know everybody at Town Hall, right? Oh, yeah. Why would we'll you need our we'll help? But, yeah, we'll but figure if, it if out. You, if you need to come back to Sarah or me, come back. But I, yeah. I think this sounds... This sounds to me like it has town hall written all over it. Okay. And maybe it would help in some other, uh, I don't know how many supplies we order uh, throughout yeah, and, the village and town. Well, and I mean, I, I try to keep stuff local, but like the lab supplies, we have to, there's nobody local that has what we need. So we have to order it. So well, Rob, if, you have any, comes. if you have any questions, Rob, I'm happy to help with it too. Okay. No, I'll uh, look into it and see what we have for account. All Anything right. else on the wastewater treatment plant? Okay, uh, Gordon, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's really important because the wastewater treatment plant is where the village of Saxons River really comes together. <laughs> Isn't it? This is where we are all united. <laughs> No, that should oh, be a new party spot. You know, you, you guys are laughing, but I, I mean, I went the day after the flood and the gates were open because everybody was in there working. And I thought we should really have a tour sometime. It's, yeah. it's fabulous. Oh, I mean, yeah. And, and it cost us a lot of money. So. <laughs> All right. All right. It's, it's not high on my agenda right now, but it, it may come back. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to move on to the fire station. Um, is there anything you want to talk about now? Matt, uh, we had originally asked you to prepare statements for us for September, but I'm thinking that it's kind of a new ball game with this charrette process coming up. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, I think I should uh, touch base um, with um, Mr. Fox and see about this uh, this other grant money that could be available for um, redesign of a fire station. That seems to be the, uh, the most important thing to happen. I mean, we, we can't just build it 
without those. Yeah, well, the U he mentioned the USDA. I, I would remind you that they call it a grant, but it is a loan. So, oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just so you know, going into it. Um, yeah. Any other questions on the fire station? And where do we go to find documents and research and all the things that have been done? Louise, do I have that in a file here or several files? I'm sorry, you're muted, Louise. I'm asking you questions, but. As far as the history of trying to build the new fire station? Yeah. Oh. United States. Oh. Yeah, there was something. Uh, I was. I'm trying to was, get Gordon, Gordon to mute because I keep hearing Gene in the background. Oh, I can mute him. Mute Gordon. Yeah, I can do that. It's Gordon, just, I'm just, muting you. You can't do anything about it. You're muted. Go ahead, Louise. Uh, what was the question? Oh, where are the files? You have yes. everything. I don't okay. have anything. And are they are they in the boxes or are they in the? Uh, I think I, they must be in the boxes. I guess so. What's the alternative? In the filing cabinet. Oh, oh no, they're in the boxes. Okay. I I uh, confess to you all, I, I do go into the boxes, but not as often as I go into the filing cabinet. Call them, call them bolts. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Moving on from fire station. Um, we come to speed radar signs. Gordon, I'm going to unmute you or mute, <laughs> unmute yourself. You're, un you're unmuted. Talk to us about speed radar signs. Well, I think they work based on my experience. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, in thinking about it, I, I mean, I think that I think that probably the, uh, the idea of Rockingham moving them around is probably our best option. Okay. I put a, I put a petition in and it got 22 signatures with the village market, which is, you know, probably pretty good. Most of them were, for up, were from up, uh, up here. And, um, you know, I mean, the thing is that when there's a hill, people speed up on the hill, and we have we have the hill that comes up to South Saxon River, and we have the hill that comes up to Pleasant Valley. You know, and pe people feel people speed up to go up the hill, and then they just keep speeding on, as far as I know. But I mean, so anyway, I think. Um, I think if 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 it's if if Rockingham is actually going to do what they seem to say they're going to do, we'll just sort of leave it at that. You know, okay. At this point, um, we have received, to my knowledge, one donation, a check uh, for fifty dollars, which I gave to Sarah Campbell to deposit. I would like your uh, your authorization to return that money to the person who donated it. Uh, um, since it was given specifically for the radar signs, which at this point we're not buying. Oh, okay. So can't go to me, in other words. No. <laughs> nice try. Uh, I mean, I put, this, uh, I put the petition in the market. No, fine, that's fine. I'm just joking. Okay, I see a question from Matt and then from Carl. Go ahead, Matt. Um, so the town of Rockingham was um, asked about this and, and they're doing what? They're, my understanding is they're purchasing two mobile radar signs, and we are in line. Um, I believe Bartonsville is using them first, I, and I don't know that they've arrived. Um, and then another location wanted them. What, what happened was there were enough people saying, gee, that sounds like a great idea, and we need them too that the town made the decision to purchase two and make them available. So, so these are the trailer type ones? Is oh, that... Rick's giving me a signal. Go ahead, Rick. You know more than I do, obviously. This My understanding is absurd. they're buying signs similar, similar to the ones that we have installed here in Saxons River, the solar ones, but they're not buying them on a trailer that they're going to figure out how to make them portable and movable. So whether they're going to be pole mounted or post mounted or mount them to a telephone pole or what they're going to do, 
I don't know, it's but absolutely they're, absurd. They're buying they're buying a couple of speed rate solar powered speed radar signs and trying and figuring out a way to make them mobile no, so yeah. that they can be placed in different locations around town from time to time. But they're not, they're not the trailer type. Yeah. They're not the trailer type because <laughs> the trailer type is, is, is pricey. Well, yeah, so that's right. <laughs> oh boy. Huh. That seems is this foolish to me a lot less satisfactory than what we were looking at it. Signs permanent for our specific location. Yeah. I, 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 I think that if that's the best we can get to the town, it might be worth putting a little bit more effort in seeing if we can fundraise outside of the town. Oh, do, do we know? Do we know the schedule? Do, you know, do we know how they're going to, how it's going to be uh, distributed, and how much time it's going to be in each place? Do we know that? No, I, I don't know. So I believe the quote that you found, Rick. I just used my email to um, yank it up. Was five thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars per sign? What? That they just purchased? No. no. Rick Rick went independently and found a quote. Was was that a single sign or was that for two signs? It's got to be for two. We I'm had sure it for two. Radar speed sign with programmable message display. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Quantity two, each three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, plus uh, a battery and a solar panel. And a delivery charge. Mm -hmm. So the total for two is five thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. It was a two bedroom condo. So each doable. is more like thirty two hundred dollars. What's your pleasure, folks? Well, Gordon, I emailed Gordon and um, Peter and Madeline, and I'm not sure who else was on the kind of the the citizens committee, um, and asked you know do what what their desire was, and at the, at that time the desire was to wait and see what the town actually came up with and, mm. and did. Um, I don't see the town getting anything accomplished until spring. Personally, I don't know why. That's just my kind of what is in my head from what I've heard, what they're doing, and, and my understanding of what they're doing. Because they're no, they're not. They didn't even really. They don't they, at the time that they talked about this. They didn't even have a plan as to how they were actually going to mount them or what they were going to do. You know, they were just so. It's it's not a very well thought out. My understanding. What I know of it is not a very well thought out plan. Um, mm. You know, at the very least, like kind of what Matt said, I thought they should invest in, a, in if they're going to buy it, you know, invest in a cheap trailer and build their own trailer mounted one. But <laughs> yeah, um, something. But but trying to figure out a way to mount them on posts or or something just doesn't seem seems like it's going to. Even after I don't know when they plan to actually purchase them, and then when or who or is going to engineer a solution for making them portable. So if we see anything by next May, I will be stunned. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it to you guys to um, prompt us um, at some point, maybe in May, maybe earlier, that if you want to return to this question. All right? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I, had a, I, had, I had a question. Okay, Gordon. It's a, a, another kind of stupid question, but the, I, the, there's somebody brought up the idea of a speed breaker. I'm sorry, what? Speed breaker. What is that? A speed breaker is a signed, um, some, it's, it's put into the road so that you have to slow down and it slows the car down. If you don't, if you go over the speed breaker too fast, 
your car will not like it. So like a speed bump? Oh. Speed bump. Exactly. Well. Like they have down at Keene State? They have, there's a lot of, a lot of different, yes, Keene State has them. A lot of places have them. It's just a, you know, it's a, a cheap solution, um, which probably has a lot of liability in it too. I don't know what that would be, but. Um, I think it's hell for snow plows. Yeah. Bicyclists hate it. It, it's yeah. really, it's not to be done right. It's not really that cheap of a solution because we'd have to get a paving company to come in and. Mm. Now we'll sell yeah. the farm. Well, in, the, uh, go ahead, Matt. So that, that I get, <laughs> if we're getting nowhere with the town of Rockingham, you know, then the village is going to have to take this on themselves, I guess. And so the next best thing is that uh, the next village meeting, annual meeting is, Try and get money in the budget to purchase a couple of them. So let's bring it up later. That gives us a little time. Um, we have to have the um, agenda for the annual meeting. I think it's 40 days ahead. Um, and I'll have to go back and read all that documentation that Louise left me to um, see when we set the date for that meeting and when we have to have the agenda. The third... 30 days? 30, 30 days. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Um, uh, Amy, go ahead, Carl. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut off discussion. For clarification for the minutes, then, um, we are returning the donation we've received and suspending collection for the signs? Yes. Okay. If, if no one disagrees. Fine. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll keep. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the petition. So, okay. that'd be great. Okay. Uh, Village Park. Um, so, just a quick update. Uh, it looks like we may have the application form and the policies by next meeting on the twentieth. Um, we have changed <laughs> mowers. So um, at the moment, Andrew Dunbar is mowing and doing the circle. <laughs> I foolishly wrote today to say, hey, could you mow it? Um, I'm a little worried about all the rain. And the answer came back, mowed last night. So I think we're <laughs> in good shape. <laughs> um, anything else on the Village Park? Okay. Um, ARPA update. So the first report is due October 31st. I'm starting to get on top of those requirements. Um, we have received the money. Uh, as you know, we are not allowed to build a fire station with that money, which is too bad. Um, we have tentatively identified a water infrastructure as a use for those funds. Um, although we may also be involved with a larger uh, Rockingham Water Infrastructure Grant that uh, Scott Pickup is working on for state funds, overall funds on ARPA. Um, this is the American, oh gosh, can somebody help Rescue. me out? Rescue. Rescue Plan Act. Yeah. It's, so. it's the money that is given specifically to this municipal organization to spend on four purposes. So I'm wondering, would you like a meeting at some point to be educated? Would I can send you to the League of Cities and Towns? I've been trying to bit by bit get myself a little more up to speed on what we can and can't do with these funds. Remember that we have a couple of years to decide what to do with them. And then a couple of years more till I think 2024 to actually spend them. But we can't, it's not as simple as, oh, we could retire the debt on the wastewater treatment plant. No, it's very specific what we can and can't do with them. So what's your pleasure? <laughs> do you want to be, do you want me to send you stuff to go and watch? There are, you know, videos, seminars, information. Uh, Matt. Um, how much money are we talking about? Or we don't know. Oh, no, we know. It's a lot. Uh, I mean, it's not a lot. Uh, and, and you mentioned, just to follow back up a little bit, you mentioned something about uh, water facility or water... Infrastructure. Infrastructure. So what, what does that mean? So Carl's 
One of Carl's concerns is that we have water issues in Saxons River and we have no public water supply. So he is part of um, an investigation um, and it appears that uh, Scott Pickup is doing an overall ARPA application, not our money, but Rockingham money that looks at exactly those issues. So as you know, I'm sure better than I, there are a number of private water sources yeah. in town. Right, right. Yeah, right. and Carl's thought, don't let me interrupt Carl. I mean, you speak, Carl. Carl, your concerns. Well, uh, this was a thought I had for the planning grant that we might look at just the general water infrastructure in the village um, where people get their water um, whether or not it's adequate for economic development, what improvements might be made. Uh, one of the main issues uh, is uh, fire hydrant supply and sprinklers. So it, it, uh, it turns out that all of the firefighting water from for downtown comes from VA. We have an agreement um, with VA to tap into their line um, for the fire hydrants and the inn has a separate need for their sprinkler system. Um, so my thought was maybe we should look at, um, is this adequate? Uh, what happens if the VA um, water supply system is not enough? They have the option to cut us off in six, 60 days, I think it is if they decide it's not adequate. Um, and when this came up as a subject for the planning grant, uh, Gary Fox said, well, better to spend ARPA money for that. And uh, VA and the town of Rockingham are uh, looking for grant money for an engineering study to look specifically at the VA supply, uh, their storage tank, their water main, um, which would affect us because we tap off of that. It just seemed to me that it might be worth our time and somebody else's money to look and see what what the village could do for itself. So hmm. that's where it came from. I got a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, we kind of ran over this last time around. So Vermont Academy and the town of Rockingham are already looking at their water situation. Yes, and they so are eager to include the village of Saxons River in that evaluation. Okay, so why do we have to spend, do we, does the village have separate money from the town of Rockingham? Yes. So then why would we spend our money on something that's going to be studied by somebody else? Okay, so let me let me back up on that. Last okay. I heard is that um, VA is uh, getting funding to do an engineering study of their of their water supply. Okay, um, which um, does not include the village. Um, depending on depending on the outcome of that. Um, they may be looking for ARPA money to improve improve or upgrade their their system, and the town may be helping with that. Now, I haven't heard anything more than that. Okay, so my concern is that we're going to spend our money on something that's already being studied, and so why why do it twice? If you're talking Vermont Academy and the town of Rockingham, I'm not sure why we are going to study it also that that's you know do you want to respond to that carl um i don't um i don't have an answer to that because i don't know what the town of rockingham um is actually planning to do i haven't heard from scott about it i haven't my, my understanding is that they want to involve the village this they it's not just va they want to involve the village and make this a rockingham water study 
Um, but it's early days, Matt. I, I think we don't exactly know. You also asked how much, and I, I don't have the wherewithal at this moment to go and look, but it's it's in it's not a ton of money, but I think over two years, it's like uh, it's above $100,000 that comes specifically to Saxons River. I think it's okay. 48,000. 148,000, thank you, Carl. Right. right, so yeah, just my concern is, you know, having another study on something that's already being studied by uh, the town of Rockingham and Vermont Academy around their water source. I just seems like um, someone's going to get double dipping into money. Okay, out there. so noted. So, and we should be putting it elsewhere if that's, if it's being taken care of in one area, we should be so, we doing something else, so. Here's a, here's a very specific question for you. Um, this money can be used, for example, to, and I've muted you, Rick, because it was so noisy in the fire station. So wave your hand around it <laughs> if you need me to unmute you. So this money could be used, um, for example, to um, deal with the fact that because of COVID, uh, there was a huge economic impact on workers in Saxons River and specifically mm -hmm. childcare. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of fluky, the stuff that it offers, but I'm just wondering, I don't really want to be the only person who is trying to be educated on this. I would much prefer it if this was something that everybody took on because all of you have so much free time. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Right, it seems vast what what it covers. Well, and no, it's only four buckets. Water and sewer infrastructure. Um, Ellen says she can help me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> She's up to speed at the um, new meeting place in Saxons River. I mean, I have to admit, when I when I go to these seminars, and if you go to... So what, were the, cities, what were the four? What oh, were the four? You gave on, me one. I can, I, can, I know water uh, and sewer is, is top yeah, on your list. On. Uh, I, I do not carry this stuff at the top of my head. Um, hold on. How may my town, city, village spend the funding? Four broad criteria. To respond to the public health emergency or its negative economic impacts here. Hold on, I'll share my screen with you and you can you can read this for yourself. Hold on, share screen, and it's this one. So this is straight off the League of Cities and Towns website. They're frequently asked questions on the American Rescue Plan mm -hmm. impact. Four broad criteria to respond to the public health emergency or its negative economic impacts, including assistance to households, small businesses, nonprofits, aid to impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. So you'd have to show that it was COVID, but that's one. Mm -hmm. To respond yep. to workers performing essential work during the COVID-19 public health emergency by providing premium pay to eligible workers. So for example, if um, we had uh, if we if we had a hospital and or a um, we, well, we don't. I don't think this applies to us, but if if we had uh, a residential care facility or mm -hmm. a public health organization, that one might be useful. For okay. the provision of government services to the extent of the reduction in revenue due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. So if we could show, now we did have some problems collecting, um, I think it was sewer bills, but we put those people in touch and we were able to collect money for some of those revenues, but that's the kind of thing. If you mm -hmm. can show that routinely you would have collected revenues, but you weren't able to because of COVID, you could. And the last one is to make necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. One of the topics is whether um, that money could be used to do uh, um, road surface issues because of flooding. 
and I haven't heard anything definitive on that yet. So let me go back up to the top then. Um, this is including assistance to households, uh, small business, nonprofits. Um, so what is our current, um, our current unpaid on sewer and village taxes? So if we have households within the village of Saxons River that weren't able to pay their sewer bill or their village taxes, I would assume that would fall into that category. Actually, there is a separate program for that, but the requirement okay. right. is, is that it has to be somebody that lives in the building that applies for it. Right, so right. If, yep. you, if you rent the building, you don't, as the, as the landlord, you don't yeah. qualify. Right. No, no, no. I'm not but that is that. a separate okay. program. Okay. All right. Can I stop and, sharing or do you want to keep looking? Go ahead, Rick. No, I'm fine. Well, so, you know, one, one thing that I wonder about with this money, and it's, you know, it may not be very popular with some, but a big part of Saxons River is the Saxons River Inn, which has been shut down for a year and a half due to COVID. And it is it reads to me that tourism, travel, and hospitality might allow us to use some of this money to help get the inn reopened at some point in the near mm -hmm. future. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's if there's plans for it to reopen. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe we could nurture plans to get it reopened. <laughs> right? No, I think it's I think it's a very good use for it. Anything to um, to get uh, people back out and about and uh, into the village. I think it needs a lot of thought. You know, the the, the, the the items seem very odd. You know, the necessary investments in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure seem like out of a line <laughs> with the other three in a way. I know, where, I know. Um, well, but, for example, let's say we discover that um, out, of, out of this purported cooperative effort, um, we see that there are some basic things to the tune of $148,000 that we could use to invest in public water infrastructure. Perfect use for it. Aligns exactly. I mean, $148,000 is not a lot of money in this area. Am I correct? You're correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. But it's some, um, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm not hearing any, uh, I mean, maybe what what happens now is somebody talks to Sarah. Um, I'm just going to leave it that League of Cities and Towns has quite a bit of information on this. If you wanted to pursue it individually, I think that might be helpful. I, I am also hoping as we go forward that other towns will demonstrate um, amazing things that we can copycat. We can also throw our money to a larger, we could um, return our money to ARPA, but we could also sign our money over to Rockingham or to the village of Bellows Falls. So those are, those are possibilities as well, if it turns out that we do not have our own project. Okay. Hearing nothing, I'm going to move on. Yes, going once, yep. going twice. Okay. Uh, back to the agenda. Oh, thank God. Something routine. We have minutes before us for approval from August 16th and August 30th. August 16th was our regular second August meeting. August 30th was our special meeting. Would someone like to make a motion? Ellen would. <laughs> Ellen would. I was just thinking that. Uh, yes, of Ellen, course. Ellen, you're, you're getting good at this. Come on. I know. I'm getting there. I move. <laughs> I move to approve the minutes from, what were the dates? August 16th and August, August 30th. 16th, August 16th and August 30th, 2001. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Matt. It's been moved and approved. 
uh, moved and seconded to approve the minutes of August 16th and August 30th. Um, all in favor, show with your hand. It's unanimous, great. Okay. A little cheat sheet up of what the Roberts rules are, what I'm supposed to say, so. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And, and I, I hope there. <laughs> the, the more you do it, the, the better the cheat sheet will be. So let me show you the warrant. And I'm thinking rather guiltily that I don't even know if I sent it to you. So just going down um, the USA Blue Book air filters for Rob, 128.96. The uh, big item here is the $7,004. That is the um, emergency replacement of the actuator. We, uh, we authorized that at the August 2nd meeting. And also related to that, the um, line number 18, $1,257.24. You heard Rob say that was the um, over, uh, overtime during that area. Uh, the other big item is our regular expense for Rob Wheeler's contract, um, $5,400, $5,500 a month. Um, the other items are pretty routine, uh, trash removal at the rec. Um, I actually wrote to Sam about that and we will look into it. Um, I was surprised to see that there was um, still a, that they were anticipating a um, container at the rec for September. So we'll Ooh. check into that. The regular gas and diesel um, bills, uh, the Wyndham County Sheriff contracted hours, j &H hardware bills, and brings us to a total which is high, as I said, because of those extra expenses of $14,913.05. Before we make a motion, well, let's get a motion first. Do I hear a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll make oh. a motion to approve uh, the uh, warrant of $14,913.05. All right. Is there a second to that motion? I second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the warrant. Now let's have discussion and questions. Move to vote. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see you. All in favor, signify by raising your hands. And it's unanimous. Okay, other business. I'll just throw out briefly, since we just passed the warrant and the, the sheriff's contract for 625 a month for the, the contract is for 12 hours per month of service and we're getting about five. I've been track. I've been getting the reports from Amy, and I've been kind of keeping track of it. So, at well, um, okay. some point, I'd like to talk about that a little bit further. But I just put that together this morning when I got the most recent report from them for the hours they put in. So, unless I'm missing something, we're getting about we're averaging about five hours per month on our twelve hour and, per month. And we're month. getting and we're getting bill. Yeah, we always get we're, billed. We have a contract. We get a monthly bill. Um, Matt and Carl, is there any history with the sheriff's department on the number of hours they actually spend in town? Well, well typically they just uh, build for the hours they had. I mean, we contracted for X amount of hours, but it wasn't X amount per month and they just build and it didn't do as no, what think, Rick is saying. I think it's an annual contract, but I'll look into that. Uh, I was... I, I can I can tell you from the past that we we had a contract with them for X amount of dollars, and they would bill us as they patrolled. Uh, winter time they weren't patrolling. We wanted um, in the past we wanted them here by the time school was out and through the summer on random times to kind of keep an eye on things. They weren't here specifically for speed. Uh, control on Westminster West Road or 121. They were here odd times of the evenings and, and they would bill us accordingly. Uh, someone was here for an hour and a half or an hour and it was shown that way. It wasn't that we had a contract and it was broken down X amount per month and that 
it, it was it was tighter than that. So yeah. that is uh, my recollection of the past. So, so the the contract reads, and I I read it again and again. I've read mm -hmm. through it multiple times since I've been here. Um, the contract reads that it's seventy five hundred dollars a year to be paid six hundred twenty five dollars per month by the first of each month. We've been paying six twenty five per month. I've went through all the warrants since I've been on the the board here. We we've, we've been paying the six twenty five per month. I don't know if they're billing us for it or if that's just a you know. No, they bill us for it. Um, and we and we've been you know we've been getting about five hours per month of service on average. And so I just wanted to. I know I brought it up a while ago and said I would be interested in in, in looking into it and seeing what what's going on and. That's what's going on. So we can talk more about it next month. Why don't you? Why don't you call the the uh, sheriff? I will try that. You know, and find out what's going on. Okay, I'm going to share the screen just so we can all be reminded of it. Uh, hold on, it just takes me a minute to. Share screen, and there it is. Um, oh, maybe this is an old one, though. I think this is this is the same, though. Our rates will remain the same as last year, forty-one dollars per hour. Fifty-two, because we're less than two thousand hours or something. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. So that's that's the new one, right? So this July. this is the current contract yes. to run yep. from July first to June June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. This will be coming up in October, so this is a good time to ask, ask these questions. Um, help me out, Rick. What should we be looking at? Um, keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. And so one of we'll six. This right the town there. shall pay to the office seven thousand five hundred dollars for the services provided under this agreement. The town agrees to pay, prepay for services twelve equal payments of six hundred and twenty-five dollars on or before the first of each month. Yeah. Don't, I will call. I will give them a call. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Well, this is a contract we signed. Well, right, but what they're doing is you can't just have a contract not do and not do work. I mean, it's they have a rate of pay, and it's based on something. It's based on hours. And right. It's based on it's hours. It's so, based on an average. Of, if you read further into it, it's based on an average of twelve hours per month. Right. And we're not getting that. We're not getting that. Well, yes. There, if you're willing means... to follow up, Rick, I think that would be great. I will. I will. Okay. And let me know if I need to go deeper into the files. Um, I think, I mean, we I've been sending you scans every month for a bit now, right? Yes. Not a ton of them, but yeah. Okay. Um, other, other business. I have one thing. So um, League of Cities and Towns. Oh, it's backwards. So helpful. Does a town fair. Um, in other jobs I've had, these have been wonderful uh, experiences. There is a day, for example, on ARPA. Um, these are, of course, um, regular work days. Um, there are, um, you can attend in person or, um, I mean, that's wrong. You can attend in South Burlington face-to-face or there will be a Zoom option. So does anybody want a copy of this sent to them? I can scan it and send it to you if you think you might be interested in attending. It's an opportunity to, is that a shaking head, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> well, a few years ago, they held them in uh, Jamaica and I went to that one, but. Was it worth it? Oh yeah, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> he doesn't mean Jamaica, Vermont, I don't think. No, I don't mean Vermont. Oh, I thought you meant Jamaica, Vermont. 
Um, Amy, yeah, I might be interested in doing the um, virtual one. Okay. So I'm scanning it and sending it to Ellen. Anybody else interested in reviewing it or is it just for Ellen? I'll look at it, but I probably won't do it. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I found their trainings helpful and very practical. Um, I don't know. I, over the years, it, it seems to me they're, they're right on the mark in terms of um, useful information that you actually need to get your job done. So maybe that says the yeah. chair needs to attend. <laughs> Items for the next meeting, September 20th. So we're gonna um, revisit the municipal grant. We are going to hear from Rick. Oh no, this is one week away. Is that too soon for the sheriff, Rick? You want a little, you want to wait until October to do that? Yeah. Okay. What else for next week? Just regular stuff? Yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had a really short? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every Monday, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm thinking we have no need for an executive session. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.